Hello, and welcome back to Tarantulas with Shanti. It's been a little over a week since I've issued a video. I was sick for several days, and I was very tired. I was lucky because it was very mild. The symptoms were not, uh, they didn't suffer. I didn't suffer a lot but I was very, very tired. And then as soon as I got better, my boyfriend got sick and he doesn't usually get sick, but he got very sick. So we had to go to the doctor and they diagnosed him with um, influenza strain B. Originally, I was going to make this into uh, just two simple rehouses but I decided that um, just showing you the one species and talking about it would be uh, better than just showing rehouses. The species I'm going to talk about, the name is Kotztetlana, Kotztetlana, species Guanajuato. Kotztetlana is a name that is part Latin and it's part of the Nahuatl language. And in Nahuatl language, um, Kotztetl means the hind legs are big. So like fat part of the leg. And this comes from Mendoza, 2012, cited in some literature uh, when they had first determined what to call this tarantula. The ANA at the end of the name is of or pertaining to. So, Kotztetlana basically means of or pertaining to fat legs. And leg number four on this tarantula is large, so it is like the king baboon species that you find, the old world species that you find in Africa. This is a new world species with thick black back legs. The shop had these tarantulas available a while back. Uh, they had an import from Mexico. They referred to it as the Mexican stout leg, as a common name, but they sold out. And uh, so I know over in Europe, I, I'm not sure where you would get them over there, but I think they may have had them over there before they had them here in the U.S. So I did a little digging because there's not a lot of information out there about them. And I had to translate some pages and do some stuff uh, to get some information. But I do have some things to share. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to voice over the uh, rehouse and I'm going to share the information that I found and some uh, screenshots of some sites and some pictures that I have to share with you. And I think that that's about the best time I'm going to be able to do it this time because I think this is a pretty slow growing species and it hasn't been in the hobby for very long. I think that the uh, Kotztetlana um, genus was just introduced in like 2012 so it's not a lot of time and these tarantulas are mostly you know species Guanajuato or species Puebla Puebla or Pueblo is another one and that basic that means that they're named after the locale where they were found until they narrow it down and name them something else until they've had time to do more research on the tarantula so right now Guanajuato is a place uh, Guanajuato is not only a municipality in central Mexico but it's also the capital city of that municipality so uh, I can talk a little bit about the region uh, where they collected these species. Um, so they came into the U.S. I think on import at the end of summer and they sold out pretty fast. I got mine uh, September 6th is when I received mine. It's going to be a while before it, it grows. It has only molted maybe once or twice, and it's already January, so it's been four months. And usually, on average, a lot of slings will molt once a month, but this one's molting a little slower than that. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with this video. 
And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'm not sure how much more information I can provide you with. I'm hoping to give you a very good look at this uh, species. Uh, I only have my one little sling. My next video that's going to be rehoused is going to be uh, the T species Ratoncita. Uh, Erophosinae species Ratoncita which is also a New World Tarantula. Uh, ratoncita means little mouse. And I will do a video similar to this one where I talk about the care of the environment, where it's from, and this sort of thing. This is also another one that is not seen in the hobby a lot yet, so still considered rare. And that ought to be, be a fun one to talk about as well. So enjoy. This is the vial where I've kept my Kotzitlana species Guanajuato for four months and it didn't need to be moved because it's a tiny, tiny little one. You can see its little bum in there on the about one o'clock and uh, it really grows very slowly. Now I've kept it in a deep vial with moist cocoa fiber and it's had a synthetic flower petal as a hide. These are very heavy burrowers and since it's so tiny I waited several months to rehouse it from the vial. I usually like to get them out of vials but in this case uh, it was so small I didn't want to remove it because I didn't want to lose it um, and I wanted to make sure it was eating and growing and molting so I decided now is the time to move the little one. Uh, these can be kept similar to a brachypelma. You want to leave a little space on the top in case they just push all the dirt up into the, into the lid. Uh, so I looked at a Facebook site called Arachnida in Mexico. I'll show you... Uh, the photo and the web page from there. Um, it was very interesting to be able to go to their site and see what they had to offer. A lot of these pages have translation from Google, so if you want to know more information, where better to go than the source? Um, so I learned some other things about this tarantula. It has uh, the genus Cotzetlana has type 1 urticating setae. They're lo located on the dorsal ad abdomen. This is similar to Acanthoscurio or Formictopus. Uh, and I will cite where you can find this information. Here's a photo that shows you what their urticating hair looks like as type 1. Now, um, these come from an area in central Mexico, which is an old colonial mining town, which now resembles a European city. Beautiful, old architecture. Guanajuato is also the name of the state that Guanajuato, the city, is located in. So it is a region. Uh, it is known as a dual climate area. Oh. So. It's dry and hot in the south and southeast portions of the municipality. We would say maybe 97 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer, 37 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter, which corresponds to 36 degrees Celsius in the summer, or 3 degrees Celsius in the winter, and it does frost in some regions. Then the other half of that dual climate is moist, temperate throughout the rest, so including the city and the overall temp is 65.3 degrees Fahrenheit or 18.5 degrees Celsius for the region. Since the region varies so much, being mountainous, having deep valleys and rivers, it has many microclimates. So there's low rainforest, there's grassland, there's temperate forest. So the rainforest can give way very quickly to pine forest, to desert, lakes, canyons, and there are cave systems. 
It's part of the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt, so there are like inactive craters and volcanic cones. It's a very interesting area and I really uh, highly suggest that you look online and um, see more. I can't really post the photos here because of copyrights, but I really encourage you to go check it out. Of course, I'm not telling you here exactly where this tarantula has been found. I just have a general idea of the region. And I really encourage you to watch a video. Um, I will put a link here about the city, Guanajuato. And I really hope that uh, you have learned something new. Until next time, catch you later.